Today we're going to talk about not one, not two, but three products in three different videos. So if you're seeing one, there's two more. Today we're going to talk about the M4 iMac, M4 Pro Mac Mini, this guy over here, this guy, and then M4 Max MacBook Pro, which is a beast. Let's talk about the beast MacBook Pro. And here it is. This is, except for the storage, the fully maxed out 16 inch Space Black M4 Max MacBook Pro with nano texture display. It has 16 core CPU, 40 core GPU, 16 core neural engine, 128 gigabyte unified memory, and 4 terabytes of SSD storage. It has 3 Thunderbolt 5 ports and it costs 6149 in regular, 5634 in education store. And it is worth every penny. The design of the MacBook Pro remains the same. The display, of course, is the same size. There's no change in the bezels. It is 14.2 if you get the 14 inch, 16.2 if you get the 16 inch version. And they support 120 Hertz ProMotion. However, as you can see now, just like the old MacBook Pros, it comes with nano texture display. This is amazing. Once you get used to this, I mentioned this in my uh, iMac video, there's no going back. It feels like your eyes can see what it needs to see without fighting, ignoring reflections. It is a calming, nice experience and it makes the screen look gorgeous. And compared to iMac, because this is a different technology, it, first of all, it's a lot brighter and there is no wash out when it comes to black. And when it comes to performance, well, you may want to sit down for this. In Geekbench 6 Multicore M4 Max MacBook Pro destroys every other machine including M2 Ultra Max Studio. In single core it has an easy lead, in GPU only M2 Ultra Max Studio gets a higher score. In low power mode MacBook Pro calms down because it's not a race anymore. In single core mode it is doing fine and GPU score seems normal. As expected, it is leading in almost every test in Geekbench AI. In Cinebench 2024, it is once again leading the max pack easily. Multicore score is above and beyond, single core score is delicious. By the way, I also did a 30 minute stress test and none of these M4 machines slowed down. When it comes to disk speed, it wasn't as fast as my 8TB MacBook Pro, but still it is very fast. In Final Cut Pro 10, when it comes to render, I believe there is an optimization issue right now because the machine isn't doing anything, so I do not take this score very seriously. However, when it comes to 8K export, it is almost as fast as M2 Ultra. Takes the lead in noise reduction test. And when it comes to compressor, once again, it is way faster than previous M Max MacBook Pros. And in every test, it is chasing M2 Ultra. When it comes to logic, M4 Max MacBook Pro was the fastest. In Blender, it was the fastest. And it took second place in CPU mode, which I do for fun. But in Lightroom, it exported 100 raw photos shot on Sony A1 into JPEG as fast as M2 Ultra, then destroyed every one when I pasted edit to 100 photos, it did this in one second. MacBook Pro also has 12 megapixel uh, camera for FaceTime and it supports center stage. As you can see, it's moving around as I'm moving around and it has the desk view and I'm really curious to see how desk view works on this. Let's hit continue. Yeah, you move this 
and then over here we're gonna have the desk view I guess so when we switch to desk view this is the desk view this has a little more distortion I think compared to the iMac because iMac is higher and the angle is different compared to MacBook Pro this has a more this has more steep angle I guess this is coming this has to fix the perspective a lot more so my hands look a little interesting right yeah and when it comes to wireless just like the other two this thing has bluetooth 5.3 and wi-fi 6e there is no wi-fi 7 on these devices i wasn't able to test the battery life so i cannot tell you a precise information about the battery life i think this machine is mind-blowing i mean i was expecting faster results but i wasn't expecting anything like this this is just fantastic in every video by the way i showed something different with mac os sequoia and apple intelligence and on this one i want to show you my mouse is here and i can move it here and then I can move it there just just with this I love this feature but another feature I love and that works so nicely is called iPhone mirroring so as you can see right now I'm seeing my iPhone and on my iPhone I'm using the Edel Chrome and what I can do is I can tap this and go to the main page of my phone i can scroll i can do anything that i can do on my phone in the beginning i was thinking yeah this is cool but when will i ever use it and then i started using it this is a fantastic feature and you have to check it out it works so nicely you can actually drag and drop let's say you're using CapCut and you're editing a video you can drag and drop a file directly into CapCut from your mac device and start editing it there and having all this freedom is great and while your device is being used there's also a notification on your phone that warns the person if your phone is on by the way you cannot use that feature as soon as i turn on my phone it gets disconnected so there are a lot of nice security measures taken for this feature as well because as soon as i heard it I had a lot of questions, but yeah, they they did take care of them really nicely. Well, thank you very much for watching this episode. And if you finished all three of these videos, kudos to you. <laughs> Please let me know what you think about MacBook Pro in the comment section below. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves and hoş çakalın.